Hi there, I'm Dr. Henry Thomas. Uh, people call me uh, Wing Commander on the Google Groups, uh, mostly because uh, I suppose I had a bit of a mission initially to try and figure out how to get my Replicator 2 printer to print reliably, and it was a bit of an all-out war. And uh, I recruited the help of uh, anybody who was willing in Google Groups to try and figure this out, and I'm going to sort of take you on a bit of a journey through how I've set my printer up and uh, now uh, it it really works as it was intended it's very reliable I'm getting terrific results out of it and any time now when I have a print failure it's really it really comes down to my own mistakes in terms of either not setting up the slicing the right way for what I want to do or perhaps a design that's really not working out the way uh, it should and so I might just cancel the print when I figure that out. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is take you through a tour of my setup uh, then I'm going to have a look at some of the things that I've made just to give you an idea of what's possible. Uh, then we're going to look at the steps that I go through to prepare the Replicator 2 for printing uh, then I'm going to have a look at some of the design considerations that you need to take into account when you are designing your own designs for 3D printing. Uh, and then finally I'm going to step through some examples of things that I have designed and printed and show you uh, how I resolved those uh, constraints and the design requirements that I had into a working uh, printable part which I was able to use then. Uh, so this is my uh, Replicator 2. Um, it's obviously been tweaked quite a bit from the uh, from or modded from the uh, one that you would just get straight out of the store. As you can see I've got a plexiglass hood. Uh, there's the extruder um, upgrade inside. Um, I've got heat sinks uh, on the back of the extruder and also a heat sink on the y-axis which takes a lot of the load. Uh, I altered the contact switch on the side here. Uh, it, when I first turned it on and I homed it, it crashed into that and um, it seemed to me as though the tab was missing. So they take the tabs off uh, when they manufacture it but I didn't know that so I went ahead and made one out of the end of a zip tie and put it in there. Then we've got the felt pads that I put on the base underneath the uh, the build plate. Um, I replaced the ones that were there because they just sort of squished down and, and you could actually wobble the build plate, it was loose so they've really firmed it up, it's really snug when it, when it slots in there. I've put on this uh, plexiglass hood which has got hinges and uh, it's got probably a couple of benefits. One of them is that it, uh, uh, you'll see it's got this sort of sealed tape around the outside here so it cuts down a lot of the noise. Um, but the main reason for putting it in was uh, I'm a bit concerned about um, the fumes that the PLA gives off. Now I know people say, oh well it's reasonably safe, but um, it's, you know, it's going to be printing in my office all the time and uh, so I'm going to be breathing in those fumes all day, every day that I'm printing and some days it's going rocks, you know, it's going 24-7. Uh, so I'm going to put, put a little fan, it's sort of a work in process, I've, I've got a little fan hole on the back there and I'm going to put a, a little little fan just to draw air through it and uh, and then vent it out to a window to the side with a bit of ducting um, that you use for a uh, dryer. Um, so I'll make those parts. I've already actually uploaded all the parts for this. I purchased this from a company in, C in Australia called Bilby CNC. It's a very nice hood and I've also got some side panels as well. So the only area that's open is the front um, and that seems to be fine. Um, <clears throat> I don't know whether it affects the print quality or not, but um, uh, the added bonus was it actually really quietens down the printer as well. Another thing I did was I um, upgraded the fan to um, a fan here. It's called uh, um, ADDA or ADA. Um, this is a two ball bearing fan. It's got the same airflow. 
Uh, same uh, current drawer, it's a 24 volt fan, um, but the RPM is about half of the one that came with the MakerBot originally. Um, so it's significantly quieter as well. And when you've got the printer printing in your office um, during the day, uh, that sort of stuff can be a bit distracting. I mean, initially it was kind of a curiosity and I didn't mind it, but now I'm, I'm glad that it's quite a bit quieter. Some other things, um, I designed a tool um, holder on the side here, which uh, stores uh, a basically you know, a range of tools and I'm gonna make another one on the other side for the rest of them. Uh, I find it's always good to have places to put things. Uh, that way, when you tidy them up, you know you've got everything so things don't get lost and everything's got a home. So it's a quick job because you don't have to think about it. You just put everything back where it goes. I've got on the back, uh, I made a, a spool holder for the spools that I use, which are these um, uh, 30 mil and they're about 100 mil or 10 centimeters wide. Uh, pretty much all the PLA now I'm, I'm using comes on these reels. Um, uh, so I really have no use for the MakerBot um, spool holder. Uh, another thing I added to the back of the printer was a filament guide. I just found that whenever I was doing filament changes, it was really hard to reach back behind there and find the little tube. So I made an attachment that goes on the back there with just a zip tie. And uh, it's very easy to find where you put the filament in and then you can just feed it up really quickly and so you're not sort of stuffing around. 